So, another good day's work done on plot 65. And here's the allotment walkabout that I should have done a week ago. Well, if you just ignore the huge pile of weeds on the left, you can see I've dug up some potatoes today. There's about five and a half pound of charlottes there, which will keep us going for at least a week. And the rest of the spuds are sitting under that mass of weeds there. So there's lots and lots of more to dig up. And on the far side there, there's all the main crop potatoes, the valor, which we have had some and were very nice. Make lovely chips, make lovely roasties, makes great mash too. And here's the Picasso, which are my later main crop spuds. Again, I'll be overwintering those. Another success story this year has been the squashes and the courgettes. Here you can see the patty pan squashes, which look like little alien spaceships sort of flat and quite wide some of them do get up to almost dinner plate size but as you can see there's quite a few here and there's another quite big one and I've put those on little pieces of wood like wooden boards to stop them uh, rotting on the wet soil because it's starting to get colder and we're getting more rain now, so we don't want these to rot off. Here are the Cox's Orange Pippin trees that we put in. We put two in uh, about two years ago, in November 2011. And so far, we've had just one apple. Not ready to pick yet, but it's looking good. But that's the only one we've had in two years. But I'm going to prune this back over winter and it'll ensure that we get some more vigorous growth for next year. Now here's my runner bean frame and we've had a load of runner beans off these. I think this week we must have picked well over seven or eight pound of the of the runner beans. As you can see there's uh, still more to come. These are only about three or four inches long. Some of the longer pods that I've had have been well over a foot long and as I say there's plenty more to come from those. These lovely blue flowers in the corner are Echinops and they're absolute magnet for bees. They've almost finished now and I can't see any bees but I'm not surprised it's a bit cool today and they're not, uh, not really good in cold temperatures, bees, they need to be warm to fly but these Echinops are absolutely marvellous and I'd recommend anybody to grow these here are the sweet corns these are the later ones which uh, got yeah. some nice corns coming and the ones at the back here we've already harvested oh half a dozen corn cobs off these and they're absolutely gorgeous, lovely and sweet as sweet corn should be and in amongst the sweet corn we've got more squashes and pumpkins growing and as you can see there's one there again put on a wooden board to stop it rotting on the soil so hopefully that with the rain we're going to get now will start to swell and swell and we might have some decent pumpkins for Halloween Back to potatoes, and about four weeks ago, I think it was the 11th of August, yes, I put in four rows of Ulster Classic, um, which are traditionally a first early potato, but can also be put in as a late, late crop. So hopefully, if I can protect these against the cold, and the frosts we're undoubtedly going to get, we might get some new potatoes for Christmas dinner. So some of them have come through already. 
others are taking their time to come through but hopefully we'll have a good crop of those for for the winter right, here we are in the fruit cage and today we've brought the chickens down with us and I think Matilda is making a little nest for herself because I think she wants to lay an egg so it would be very interesting if we can catch that on film so while we're waiting let's have a look around the fruit cage we've done a little bit of tidying up We've uh, been pruning the black currants and the red currants and the blueberries and the blackberries. There's uh, Flo having a good peck around. All the strawberries are finished now. We did get quite a good crop this year, but they've finished now. We've uh, been pegging off all the runners. Often when we know that the chickens are making a noise that they want to lay we put in that uh, put in a temporary hen house which is just a cardboard box with some uh, shredded paper in it and they often go in and make a little nest in there but uh, as I've already pointed out she's decided to make a nest in the corner of the fruit cage instead which I suppose is more natural. And this is Maud, our oldest chicken. We've had her since uh, 2011, March in fact. So she's one of our, one, the only one left from our first uh, uh, batch of hens. In this patch we've got peas, we've got some that we've already had crops from and they're just about finishing now. We put some later peas in uh, which have grown up through the uh, netting that we protected them with but that's okay we're going to use that as support and then put some pea sticks. Behind that we've got yet more patty pan squashes, you can probably just see just the edges of them there. There's about five on that plant and coming back round we've got cabbages which the caterpillars have had a good old munch on and under this frame here we've got lots of uh, greens that we actually grow more for the chickens than for ourselves. We've got kale, borough kale We've even got some spinach there at the end. Well, I must admit, we do like spinach rice for our dinner. It's very nice. And just where uh, Wendy Wurzel is, our scarecrow, we've got yet more squashes. And this one is a butternut squash. And you can see one just there, nestling in amongst the grass. But this is like a triffid. It's spread itself far and wide. And we reckon there's about half a dozen hidden under the leaves. So plenty of uh, squashes there to come. So today's walkabout will finish up in the greenhouse. And as you can see the tomatoes still doing well. Plenty of green ones which will ripen. Provide we get enough sunshine. Those we've had, we've got two types in here. We've got alicante, that's these bigger ones. And then we've got um, these red cherry ones, these very tiny red cherry tomatoes. And they're lovely and sweet. But the other success we've had this year has been the peppers. And we've got some absolute whoppers here. Just look at this tree, this, which is only growing in a plant pot. And we've counted and there's about 13 fruits on this tree and they're supposed to be red so again provide me get enough sun they're going to get bigger and they're going to turn red so those are amazing best crop of peppers we've had I think ever <laughs> 